So I spent a lot of time this winter working on the KLX 300, um, upgrading some parts, swapping some things out that didn't quite work for me. Um, and I wanted to give you a quick rundown of everything I've done to it. Um, and I'll leave a parts list in the description below in case you want to do any of this to your bike. The very first thing I did to this bike was switch out the front sprocket. Um, it comes with a 14 tooth one stock. Um, I switched it to a 13 tooth and it gives you a little bit more torque, gives you a little bit more pull power in those lower gears. Swapping out and testing out different gearings on this bike goes a long way to get it to suit your riding style. I think the way they have it set up stock is really good for 50-50 riding. On-road is totally fine. Um, light trails is fine, but if you want to do some more intense trail riding, consider switching out the front sprocket. One day I would like to try out a 42 tooth rear sprocket, uh, but I don't want to lose too much top speed in case I do need to take this thing on the highway. And I do have a 52 tooth rear sprocket that I'd like to slap on this thing one day just for fun. Um, I don't think it'd be very practical, but it'd be fun to give it a shot. Next, I upgraded the springs on the front and rear suspension. Um, I'm a big guy, so really whatever bike I buy, um, this is something I always do. I got the front springs from Race Tech. Um, if you haven't used Race Tech before, they're really cool. They ask you for a little bit of information, like your weight and riding style, um, and then they will recommend the perfect spring rate for you. Um, so I got the front springs from Race Tech. I got the rear spring from Cogent Dynamics. Um, Cogent Dynamics had the heaviest rated spring I could find um, without having a special order or anything. I thought it was real cool too because uh, Cogent Dynamics is in North Carolina. I'm also in North Carolina and they just had great customer service and got me a spring real fast. You can do a little bit of adjustment on the stock suspension, but really they make these bikes for people who weigh a lot less than me. So the stock suspension is very soft as it should be. This is meant to be an on-road, off-road motorcycle. I wanted to use it more for the trails, so really upgrading the suspension is a no-brainer for me. Next, I wanted to upgrade the handlebars and everything that went along with that. If you're not quite ready to switch out your handlebars, but you want a little higher angle, you can just loosen the mount on them and push them up, tighten it back down. So the stock handlebar actually got a slight bend in it the very first time I laid this bike down. So at that point, I was like, all right, let's, let's just go ahead and swap this all out. Um, I bought the Pro Taper CR High Bend. Um, I bought a 30 millimeter Tusk handlebar riser. Um, and the cool thing about that combo is you don't need to switch out any of the stock cables. So your clutch cable, throttle cable, they're long enough. And this setup also gives me a much nicer angle when I'm standing up. Um, like I said, I'm tall, I'm 6'6", so I needed a little extra um, height on those handlebars. Uh, so that made a world of a difference. One thing I'll mention, if you're going to be switching out your handlebars, uh, go ahead and just buy a new throttle tube as well. The stock throttle tube, the hand grip is glued on there in such a way where it makes it like impossible to get it off. It was really the biggest hassle of the project. Um, so if you're ordering handlebar parts, just go ahead and get a throttle tube so you can start fresh. Of course, you can't get new handlebars without getting hand guards as well. Um, I've never been able to pronounce this brand name. When we were kids, we used to call it Acer Bees, kind of like Applebee's, but I'm pretty sure that's just uh, country talk. So anyway, this is the uh, Acer Bees X Factory uh, hand guards. They've worked really well for me. I've laid the bike down a couple times since changing these out and I haven't had any problems. Um, the one snag I did run into was the clutch lever was too long to fit inside the hand guard. So I just trimmed down the clutch lever and it, it worked fine after that. Then of course I switched out the mirrors. The uh, stock mirrors are always, you know, kind of like an afterthought. The stock mirrors, I could not get them to stay in place while I was riding. The funniest thing about the stock mirrors is like, I don't think I could ever see anyone behind me, <laughs> which defeats the whole purpose of even having them on in the first place. The double take mirrors are the go-to mirrors for adventure bikes and dual sports. Um, I think there's a good reason for that there. Super easy to use, super reliable. I also switched out the foot pegs. Um, I went with the IMS Superstock foot pegs. A uh, ton of people recommend those. Um, they're much wider than the stock foot pegs. When you first get on these bikes and you're riding it on the road and you know maybe around in the backyard, the stock foot pegs don't really feel too bad. Like, you know, you feel like you can get away with using them. 
But once you get on the uh, tougher trails, you really need some more foot real estate. These IMS super stock ones will give you all the foot space you need and you'll definitely have more control of your bike on the trails. I also switched out the shift lever with the IMS uh, shift lever that was made for a XR650. But you know, they do fit on these bikes. You do need to bend them a little bit on your own um, and get that angle just perfect for you. But these are pricey shift levers. I was kind of surprised when I saw the price on Amazon. I think it was like close to $50. Before you swap out your shift lever, I recommend seeing if you can get the stock one to work for you. Um, you know, switch up the angle, bend it a little bit if you need to, um, give it a shot. So that's everything I've done to the bike so far. Um, the next thing I plan on doing is switching out the tires. Um, I made a video about the stock tires on here, the Dunlop 605s. They do not do good in wet conditions and I go through a lot of wet terrain, so they just don't work for me. They work fine on road and on dirt roads, service roads, that kind of thing. Um, in the trails, if you're ever near mud, clay, sand, these tires are not gonna work for you either. Um, so that's the next thing I'm gonna swap out, um, either with the Tusk Dual Sport tires or the Pirelli MT21 in the front, uh, Dunlop 606 in the rear. Whatever I choose, um, I'll mount them up and let you know how they feel and let you know if it's worth the price. A lot of people will switch out the stock exhaust on these bikes too, which makes sense to me. Um, but I have not found one that's quiet enough uh, that I feel like I wanna make the switch. A lot of times when I'm out exploring on the KLX 300, I don't really want to be loud. Um, I'd prefer a quieter exhaust. Um, these stock ones aren't great, they're heavy. Um, but until I find one that kind of suits me better, I'm gonna leave the stock one on. If I do find a better exhaust, I'll go ahead at that point and switch out the snorkel um, and uh, add a fuel controller. But for now, intake and exhaust, I'm just gonna leave stock. And of course, there's the secondary throttle plate removal. Um, a ton of people do that, and I get it. I've seen the charts. Um, but I didn't really buy the KLX 300 to be a power horse type bike. And I feel just playing with the gearing, you could better customize it to get to your preferred riding style. I don't really have an interest in taking out the secondary throttle plate, but I understand the appeal and I don't blame you if you wanna do it. So like I said, I'll leave a parts list in the description below. Um, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, you know, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll try to respond as quick as possible. Um, if you're interested in the KLX 300 and want to see more videos on it, please like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to make fun of me in the comments, and I'll catch you on the next one.